All right, so to get started for this one, I just have a sphere in the center that I subdivided a bit. Got a camera pointed at it. Then in the shading workspace, I've got my 3D viewport set up in the cycles renderer. Then I just have unchecked scene world. And then for the lighting, I'm using this built-in forest lighting that Blender already has. I'll just press new. And for the sake of things, I'll just call it charger plastic, or you can call it laptop plastic, whatever you want to call it, because it is sort of a plastic that is used in the making of the laptop chargers and things like that. Anyway, so the first thing we're gonna do is enable the Node Wrangler add-on, so edit preferences, go to add-ons, search up the Node Wrangler add-on and hit the checkbox here. That's gonna give you a bunch of shortcuts and things like that. So I'll press shift day and we're gonna search for a noise texture, get started like so. Now with this selected, we can press Control T and it'll give us our mapping and texture coordinate. Then we'll just take our object from the texture coordinate into the mapping. So then if we Control Shift and left click this noise texture, we get a preview of what's happening. So I'm just gonna also hit Shift A and I'm gonna search for a map range node like this and put it in after so we can see what's going on. So then on this noise texture, I'm gonna switch the scale to an 80 because we're currently we're making a little glinty spots you see on the chargers when it's clean and not dusty. So the detail is gonna be 16, and then we'll leave the roughness alone. Then we're gonna take on this map range, the front minimum up to a 0.3, and then the front max down to a 0.315. So we get those little tiny butt dots that we'll use in our roughness map. Then I'll go ahead and zoom out. I'm going to select both of these guys, and I'll press Control Shift D, and I'll duplicate them while keeping the vector in here. I'm just gonna grab this and move them this way, and move this up here so we have some more space. Then on this one, I'm just gonna switch the scale to a 100. So now we're gonna combine these guys. So we'll hit Shift A and search for our mixed RGB because it's just two levels of detail. We'll take this result into color one and this one into color two. And then we're gonna switch to the blending mode here to multiply. And if we control shift and left click this guy, we can see what's going on. And if we switch the factor to a one, we now have our tiny little black dots. Sweet. So then after this, we actually, we actually wanna change the maximum roughness value where the white is to something lower, so we're gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna search for a, another map range node, just like this, plug it in after the color to the value. Then we're gonna take the values on this, the minimum is gonna be a zero and the max will be a 0 0.3, just like this. So now we're gonna add in our dust. And to do that, we'll once again be using noise texture. So I'm just gonna select both of all these four, press Control Shift D and move them down here. Then on this first noise texture, I'll go ahead and Control Shift left click the map range so we can preview. I'm gonna switch the scale to a 50. This is gonna be the bigger chunks of dust. And then we're gonna leave the other values as they are. Then this other noise texture, the scale to a 75. So then on this map range that we have previewed on the top one with the 50 noise texture into it, I'm gonna change the from minimum value to a 0.65 and then the from max to a 0.7. And that's gonna give us this sort of dusty chunk effect. Nice. Then I'm gonna change the maximum to a 0.25 because we don't want the dust to be super thick because it's not like super, because it's sort of like see-through, so we don't want it to be too overwhelmingly uh, dominant. So then on this bottom guy, we're gonna be doing something similar. I'm gonna take this from min to a zero, then from max to a one, control shift left click to preview if you wanna see what's going on. And then the maximum on the bottom to a 0.25, just like this, this is gonna be sort of like a whole layer of dust that's affecting the whole thing. So then we'll combine these guys together with the mix RGB, shift day search, mix RGB, then we can just plug both of these guys into color one and color two, change the blending mode to add, just like this, and the factor to a one. Then we're gonna mix that with our previous guy up here. So I'm gonna press shift D on this add node, put it in right here, and then take the map range into color one like this. So now we have our roughness map. Then I'm gonna go ahead and check clamp on this so we don't get anything outside of the values of zero to one. Then I'll just plug him into our roughness right here. Now we're gonna plug in our dust to the bump because it's slightly higher. And so we'll hit Shift A, search for a bump node. Take our color here into the height, the strength down to a 0 0.001. So it's very slight, you won't be able to see it in your preview, but if you bring it up to anything higher, then it'll get a little bit too much. So I'm bringing it down to a 0 0.001. Maybe you could go for a 0 0.005, but I prefer this. So then I'm gonna take the normal into here. And if we preview our shader right now, this is what we have. So now I'll plug in the color so it starts to look somewhat good. I'll hit Shift A and search for a mix RGB here. Then we can plug in our add node from down here into our factor. Then color one is going to be the color of our plastic. And I'll give you a hex value for that. I'm gonna use a one, two, one, two, one, three. Again, that is a one, two, one, two, one, three. 
just like that. Then color two is going to be a 3F3E3D. Again, that is in 3F3E3D, just like that. That is the dust. Then we'll plug our color into the base color. So now we have the main stuff going on. We have those little shiny spots that are peeking through right there. And if there's, not, if there, we decrease the dust amount. And to do that, it's really easy. You can just go ahead and in here and take these maximums and change them to zeros. And then you have no dust on your mesh whatsoever. And you sort of see them glinting. But obviously, the dirtier your mesh is, or the material is with the dust and stuff, the less you'll be able to see the little glinty stuff on the plastic. So then we need to give the plastic its base bump. So I'll hit Shift A and I'm gonna search for a musgrave texture. Then I'll take this vector into our musgrave vector. Then I'm going to hit Shift A and search for a map range node. Plug the musgrave height into the value. Control Shift and left click on the map range. I'm gonna change the scale on this musgrave to a 200 and the detail to a 10. And the dimension down to a one. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us this cool sort of bumping effect. Then on this guy, I'm just gonna change the minimum value to a 0 0.05, and the two minimum, and then the two maximum value to a 0.1, just like this. Then I'm gonna plug this guy into a bump node. So I'm gonna select this guy and press Shift D, move him over here, take this result into our height, and then take the strength to a 0 0.05. Then plug the normal from that into here. So if we control shift and left click on the normal we just made, you can sort of see that we have a little bit of bumpiness in the plastic, sort of the pattern that's on it going on. Then if we control shift and left click the principal shader, we have our finished material for our plastic. With that said, that's gonna be the end of everything and hopefully you have enjoyed this and can use it in your renders. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.